So deputies in Colorado decide to taser um, a 16 year old human trafficking victim, allegedly. Uh, let's put up the picture full mask. This story has a lot of twists and turns, and it's quite unbelievable what these officers did. So per a lawsuit obtained by Atlanta Black Star, a group of Colorado deputies are alleged to have violated the civil rights of a 16 year old child, a girl who was reportedly the victim of a sex crime and used excessive force against her when she was detained two years ago in the West Cliff, uh, in West Cliff, Colorado. This was January 18th, 2022. Lawyers representing the young child identified as LZ in the complaint allege Custer County deputies, Michael Keir and Miles DeYoung and Megan Robbins alongside Sergeant Scott Henshaw. They were all involved in the detainment, which was caught on body cam footage. We have the screenshots here. The footage shows deputies or a deputy finding the then 16 year old girl at a trailer in town with these two older men. Okay, look at this. They went into the trailer. These individuals are there. Deputies received a call that she ran away from home. So after the cop finds the teen, <clears throat> excuse me, hiding in a closet, he handcuffs her, leaves her outside. The complaint says the deputy alleged the girl tried to pull away from him after they walked outside. So he forced the girl face first into a parked car. Body cam shows after some time. Deputy DeYoung arrives to help Deputy Keir take the girl into custody. So you hear Keir ordering the girl to get into the back of DeYoung's car, but she refuses to comply and lets her legs give away to sit down on the ground. You see it there. After demanding she get up in the car, the deputies try dragging her instead. And at one point, LZ suddenly turns ahead. At Kira and alleged, it is alleged to attempt to bite him. And the deputy gives her a warning, which uh, while she, uh, while he's struggling to put her in the car, the young asks Kira if he thinks she should be tased. So Kira says no. It's on the video. He says no. Moments later, deputies finally got the girl partly into the backseat. And demanded she put her whole body in the car. So Deputy Keir asked her if she wanted to get tased when she would not comply and pulled out his taser. After deputies try ordering the girl again, the sick uh, Keir uses the taser on the 16 year old girl, and the girl shifts her body so that she's fully inside the car. Before leaving the scene, Keir questioned one of the older men. This is the deputy. He questioned one of the older men the girl was with. He told both deputies that he brought LZ to the trailer from some unknown location and that she told him that she was 18. The man also said they regularly help addicts and others who need help and allowed them to stay in that trailer. However, the lawsuit alleges that, quote, the situation presented all the hallmarks of sexual trafficking of a minor. But neither Kier nor Dion questioned the two men, furnished control, if they furnished controlled substances to LZ, the minor, were providing her with alcohol or were engaged in sexual activity with LZ. These things are normative investigative protocols. They did not employ them. Neither the two men were ever investigated for harboring a runaway or contributing to the delinquency of a minor, according to the complaint. Body cam footage shows Deputy Kier only wanted the man he was questioning, only warned the man about a warrant. So they run the background, one guy has a warrant for his arrest, all right? But decided to let him go as a courtesy while promising to return the next day if he did not go to court. So one guy has a warrant, he has a minor in his home, the minor seems to be either high or intoxicated, and nothing happens to him at all. The officer just says, I'm 
I'm going to let this slide as a courtesy, but you better go to court. There's more. After leaving, both of the deputies arrived at the sheriff's office where Deputy Robbins and Sergeant Henshaw, they join in. Keir also retrieves a restraining chair to put the girl into. After Deputy DeYoung opens the police car door and demands LZ, the child, to walk out of the car, she remains inside. She's still handcuffed. Deputy Kier threatens to shock her again if she does not comply and get out of the car. She refuses to move. So the deputy uses a taser on her once more. And LZ cries out in pain before getting out of the car and into the chair. She also begins convulsing, hyperventilating, urinating in the pants, according to the lawsuit. Body cam footage does show her in distress. And heaving severely, she's 16 years old. After restraining LZ, deputies then escort her inside the sheriff's office. And the rest of the footage shows her gasping for breath as she is restrained and being monitored before deputies further restrain her and put a bite mask on her. The legal complaint states that Deputy Kier believed LZ to be under the influence of a controlled substance during her detainment. He requested that she be charged with resisting arrest, but the DA dismissed that charge after the girl's legal team filed a motion asserting defendant Kier engaged in outrageous government conduct, end quote. Tyler Jolly, one of the attorneys representing the young teen, said she was exposed to great injury, pain, terror, and risk of death. And that this kind of treatment would be excessive against a hardened criminal. To treat a 16-year-old child and the victim of a sex crime like this is absolutely disgusting. The suit seeks damages in a jury trial, and I hope they get it. The Custer County Sheriff's Office posted this Facebook statement, quote, The Custer County Sheriff's Office received notification January 17, 2024, that a lawsuit had been filed against three former deputies, former deputies and one current detention deputy. The lawsuit alleges that a deputy used excessive force while arresting a 16 year old and and two other former deputies along with one current detention deputy failed to intervene. The incident occurred on January 18, 2022 under a previous sheriff's administration. The current sheriff, Rich Smith, has not been served yet with a lawsuit but is very concerned about the allegations. Sheriff Smith requested today the Colorado Bureau of Investigation review the January 18, 2022 incident which is documented on body worn cameras and in police reports. Sheriff Smith volunteered to support their findings up to and including the possibility of criminal charges. Sheriff Smith also notified the Colorado Post Director of the allegations. I got to say this about the current sheriff, all right? You have a chance here. Your initial response was proper. I would give you absolute credit for the initial response. Now, you should run a concurrent investigation along with the state authorities to make sure there's nothing left unturned. This was a child. This was a baby. The officers did not even question the men. What kind of connection or relationship did they have with these individuals who were housing this young girl? You know this smells bad, and honestly, Sheriff, because of your constitutional authority, you don't have to play the game that other cops play. You can arrest other police officers. You can arrest former cops without the political backlash that someone would have as being an appointed chief. You should utilize the power of the people who elected you and do the right thing in the community by this child. All right, Wazni, thoughts? Just a tragic, tragic terrible situation. Um, Just the way that these police officers comported themselves, obviously in a previous segment, (laughs) we saw the police act, you know, with the level of deference and patience that clearly these individuals did not afford to this young woman who was so obviously 
in an adverse situation. Um, the idea that you would just manhandle and ragdoll a, a young lady like this um, is insane. And what I would say to folks is that the police, it's not just that they do this to Black people, they do it to the people that they deem to be on the fringes and the edges of society who they yep. decide don't deserve a level of respect and dignity, be they white, black, brown, or otherwise. And so this it's just a constant theme with these folks. Um, when they feel like you're not one of the, you know, upstanding, up and up people in society, then you're deemed less than and deserving of horrible treatment at their hands. This is why we have to stand up for each other. This is why yep. we are better, more able, more effective as a closed fist rather than an open hand, right? So the unity is required. We stand with the victim and we advocate for justice for her and her family.